Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about winter time in your camper van. We've got some top tips coming your way. Okay, so winter time is no joke when you've got a camper van. Look how dark it is outside, and guess what? It's just gone five o'clock, so it's pitch black, absolutely freezing outside today as well. And it just made me think, you know what? It's time for our top 10 winter tips. And we're gonna divide these into two. So we've got uh, some winter tips, first of all, which are about preparing your van for winter. If you're gonna leave it static, you're not thinking about driving it or camping in it particularly. And then we've got some tips for you if you are thinking about going away and camping in it, uh, which might help keep you warm, might help keep you safe. So uh, let's crack on and one other thing to be aware of is today we've got another giveaway uh, so there is a competition and I'll come to that in a few minutes right so first of all then uh, prepping your van for winter uh, if you're leaving your van it's probably a good idea to make sure that you've prepped your water system so uh, make sure that you've got your tanks emptied you might want to give them a clean uh, we use Milton in our um, tanks once a year and the process we use for that is we um, empty the tanks, put a bit of water in them, put some Milton in that water using the dilution uh, ratio which is on the bottle uh, and then we run it through uh, the tap for a couple of minutes or so going into the waste. We pour some more down the sink of that made up solution into the waste as well. Then we go for a drive in the van because it sloshes it all around all over the place and gets it covered inside all of the tanks. A uh, couple of humpback bridges, you know, kind of move it around. Uh, then we come back, empty all of that out, uh, fill it with fresh water, whole tank of fresh water, run the, uh, run the sink tap for a couple of minutes, just kind of running that through, letting some of that go into the waste as well. Uh, and then uh, once we've done that, empty the rest of that water um, uh, and then fill it up again. Then go for a bit of a drive with some fresh water and swill it around again, then empty that out and then we leave it. So we leave our wastewater valve open over winter uh, and if we're leaving the van and we're not thinking about using it, we'll also leave our normal water tank open as well. Um, so uh, that's uh, we find that's always worked well for us. Uh, we've never had an issue. I'd rather they were, if they if they were going to freeze, I'd rather they freeze in the open position rather than the closed position. Um, and uh, it seems to be good practice that we've read everywhere else as well. One thing to note when you're emptying the water out of your water tanks, if you uh, just make sure that you haven't got the plug in your sink, because uh, obviously it needs to try and drain and that would create a bit of a vacuum if you didn't. So take the plug out of your sink um, and make sure that you run the... Um, sink tap uh, as well just to make sure that you've got every last bit out of the pipes and everything else so definitely worth just making sure of that if you can so that should have your water system kind of emptied and as dry as you can make it uh, for the winter period obviously switch your gas off if you're thinking about leaving your van on the driveway take your gas bottle inside the house probably i wouldn't leave it in the van you can leave it in the van it's just if it gets really cold way below fleas at freezing and things you might want to take it in um, that might just help a little bit right um, another good tip for you in terms of maintenance over winter is running the diesel heater periodically um, so we've got a diesel heater in our california uh, you've probably got something similar in your van um, definitely worthwhile just running it. We tend to run it once a month for about half an hour and it just makes sure everything's ticking over as it should uh, and uh, we just think it's again good practice because if you do want to use it or you come to use it and it's not working you um, you don't want that situation because you've got to be warm. Uh, so definitely worthwhile just running up the diesel heater make sure it's okay. That also helps with um, thinking about the um, uh, battery condition uh, so definitely worthwhile just working through the battery condition making sure you've got a van uh, on hookup so you're trickle charging your batteries uh, in the california if you plug the hookup cable in if you've got a, an ocean or a coast like this or an early se uh, you've got two leisure batteries in here as well as the main battery and it will charge both of the leisure batteries and then the main battery 
starter battery if you leave it on hookup. We tend to leave ours on hookup, just plugged into a three pin socket on the side of the house uh, through winter. Uh, we do come in, we do check it occasionally, we take it off the hookup when we run the diesel heater because obviously that uses a bit of power out of the batteries which is quite good to cycle them uh, and then uh, we charge them back up again. So definitely worthwhile just keeping an eye on your batteries and uh, making sure that they're okay. We like to have a temperature sensor in the van that we can see from the house. Uh, and we do that with a SwitchBot. Um, so I don't know whether you've seen SwitchBot before, but SwitchBot make all sorts of things. Uh, they make those little fingers which turn devices on um, uh, if they're not automatic devices, but they do make one of these. Uh, and this is a temperature sensor, and it's a Bluetooth temperature sensor, nothing overly fancy about that, it does humidity as well. But the fancy part is when you pair it with one of these, um, which connects to uh, your uh, router in the house, these two work together, and it means that it then starts to collect data over a period of time, and it can do automatic alerts to tell you when it's getting to a certain temperature outside, and it sends you an alert to your phone. And the reason we like that is because if your van's going to be going below freezing inside, we tend to have a temperature sensor inside the van, if it's going to go below freezing then you get a message on your phone um, saying it's going to go below freezing. And that might just act as a little jog of the memory to think, have I emptied the water, did I take that bottle of water out that I'd left in the van, are there some cans of coke or beer in the fridge that I need to take out just that little reminder of is it ready for winter and I quite like to know when our van is going below freezing inside um, over the winter period and it's quite nice you can see on a little graph afterwards uh, how the van's doing uh, you can see the temperature go up and down during the day and night and things and a, a bit of a trend over the days and weeks and it's just pretty cool uh, and we really like it it's the best solution we've found for it so far um, if you want to win one of these kits from SwitchBot they've been really good to us on the channel here and they have given us a set to give you. So we have got a set of two thermometers and one hub uh, which means that you'll be able to monitor two cars or a room in a car. You can put obviously uh, one of these uh, thermometers wherever you like. Um, that kit there we're going to give away to one lucky winner on the channel and all you have to do to enter is, well we'd ask you to subscribe, uh, that would be really nice, but all you have to do is enter a, enter a comment down below to this YouTube video and all you have to do is use the word SwitchBot. Um, so if you're going to comment on the video anyway saying thanks or what a load of rubbish or whatever, just put the word SwitchBot in and then you're going to enter the competition. And that's one word, SwitchBot, that's B-O-T, all one word, enter it in the comments below and we're going to pick a winner at random. That's all you have to do to enter the competition. Uh, we're going to run the competition from a, for a week's time from when this video is published uh, and then we will uh, write in the comments below who the winner is. We're going to pick the winner, we'll contact you and then we'll carry on by email from there. So good luck everyone, write the word SwitchBot in the comments below and you could win a set of these thermometers. Okay, uh, let's carry on then. So tyre pressures. Uh, if you're going to leave your van over winter definitely worth thinking about tyre pressures because again um, I've got a bit of history with classic cars and kind of kit cars and all that kind of stuff and I know that I've left them over winter before without doing anything to the tyres and the first thing that happens when you drive away uh, after winter time is that it feels really lumpy it feels like your wheels haven't been balanced and that's because I didn't pump up the tyres to a higher pressure to store it over winter. So obviously tyres are rubber and over a period of time the weight of the, the weight of the car, the weight of the van sits on the tyres and if you don't drive it every day and you leave it for a couple of months it starts to press down in the same place on the tyre if you haven't moved your van around. Now one way of counteracting the impact of that is pumping up the tyres. So if you pump up your tyres just remember I tend to write myself a post-it note and leave it on the dashboard to say tyres inflated for winter because if I don't I might end up driving off with 60 psi in the tyres when it needs 40 but it does make a big difference it does stop them getting slight flat spots on when your van's been resting for a little while so definitely worth considering doing that. The other quick tip in terms of parking the van uh, is don't put the handbrake on so leave the handbrake off because otherwise it might uh, might rust on at the back solid. Uh, it does happen in a couple of months it doesn't take long 
Um, so leave the handbrake off, leave it in gear instead, uh, obviously so it can't be rolled around or move or, or leave it in park if you've got an automatic or a DSG box. Uh, and that will help your brakes too. Uh, so definitely worth uh, considering. And the other thing, I, it sounds crazy, but when you first put your van away for winter, if you've just washed it because you want it to look nice over winter on the driveway, go for a drive before you put it back on the drive. Don't just wash it and leave it because all that water that you've just coated all the wheels in sits on the discs, it sits on the pads and they start to corrode together and if you don't move it for a couple of months after you're going to get that horrible feeling when you put it in gear, go to drive off and it feels like the brakes are still on and then it suddenly goes with a clunk. So definitely worth just remembering, go for a quick drive if you've just washed your van and you're going to park it up for winter. Okay, um, final couple of tips then just in terms of storing your van over winter, the fridge. So California's got a fridge built in. We tend to just leave it either wide open or just on the latch. Uh, it depends which California fridge you've got. Some have got gas struts, some uh, have got uh, just friction. Uh, we tend to leave it open, stops any funky smells and all of that uh, kind of creating inside. If you've got a little tiny speck of food in there or anything like that, at least it's not gonna suddenly go horrible in there when you've got it really uh, nice and wide open. So definitely worth considering doing that. And finally, um, would you want to saw on your van? Um, this might save a little bit of money. We talked about this in our cost of living video. Definitely worth thinking about. If you're not thinking about driving your van, it's probably costing you a good amount of money a month. And these days you can pay for road tax with direct debit if you want to, which means you can stop and start it for different months if you want to through the year quite easily. So definitely worth thinking about if you are not gonna use your van for two, three, four months over the winter time, you could get yourself a few bob back. So definitely worth thinking about that. Right, let's crack on then with the tips which are for using your van over winter. If you're gonna use your van over winter, first things first, think about windscreen covers. Now, um, I wouldn't say there's a lot of debate about whether windscreen covers are a good idea or not, but we really like ours. It's a comforts one that we use. It goes on the outside of the windscreen, covers the side windows of the doors and the windscreen itself. It's a thermal cover, it pops up nice and small. You can hold it in the tailgate if you've got a California. And you know what? It, it, it cuts out all of that condensation inside over winter. We just find it works really well and it's nice and black out as well, obviously. Um, yes, it's something else to carry around in the van instead of the little curtains and the, the um, blinds that you've got in the front already, but we think it's well worth it. So definitely worth checking that out if you haven't got one already and it will keep your van warmer. There's no doubt about that. It definitely keeps the van warmer. Then what about the pop top? So if you've got a pop top on your van, you probably know that as you start to get into the winter months, it does start to get a little bit on the chilly side. Right, so there's a few options here. You've got things like uh, the original Cali topper, which is basically like a big hat, which goes over um, the roof when it's up, uh, covers all the sides, and obviously all the um, rain, snow, wind, water, everything just gets protected from the canvas. They're a bit tricky to put on though, especially if your van is wet. So if you've arrived somewhere and it has been raining, because it gets a bit sticky with all the water on and everything, trying to then heave something over the top of the canvas and everything can be a bit tricky uh, and not very pleasant if it's windy because it acts like a massive sail. Um, so not, I mean, we've had them and they've been okay, but these days we prefer either a wrap, um, so, Rainbow screens do them, I think uh, camper van bits do them. It's a wrap which goes around where the canvas is. So if you imagine, uh, you start on one side, you feed it around your canvas and join it together at the back. That then gives you a nice um, kind of cover for the canvas and protects the bulk of the, the roof uh, if you need to, uh, from wind and rain kind of thing. It gives you a thermal layer too. The other way, and this is our current preferred way, is using a Brandrup isotop. And the isotop is a, basically like a fleecy liner, uh, which uh, is uh, installed inside of the pop top, gives you that insulating layer, uh, and it really makes it lovely and toasty and snug up there. And it was actually our first ever video that we made for this channel, was me crawling around in the heat 
uh, installing an ISO top upstairs. So if you haven't seen that, you should check that out. It's very funny. Um, so definitely worth checking that out. Um, so assuming you've got a windscreen cover, you've got your ISO top, it's all looking good. Actually, another little thing that you could do if you're thinking about buying a camper van or you're specking a van to convert and all those kind of things is thinking about heated windscreen. Um, now, I know I said that if you've got a cover on the windscreen at the front and you um, use it, you're not going to get all that condensation and everything inside. Problem is, and this is what we found, in the morning when you go outside to take the cover off, then you go in the boot, you put in the cover away and everything, by the time you've had the boot open and you shut it, a gust of cold air goes in the van, and although you haven't got that kind of rain going down the inside of your windscreen kind of condensation, you suddenly get this film of condensation inside just from the fact that you've had the doors open on a cold day uh, and uh, you've put the cover away. So a heated windscreen in that situation clears that really quickly, and clearly if you've got ice, snow, anything else on the, wind, on the windscreen on the outside, uh, if you've just used it every day, heated windscreen really does help fix that. And again, we tested the heated windscreen on our California on the channel. Check that video out. Uh, it'll give you a bit of insight into how quickly it works and, and what it does. So definitely worth thinking about if you're specking a California or you're looking at a van to convert, see if you can get a heated windscreen. We think they're great. Uh, winter tyres. Um, so winter tyres are definitely worth thinking about. Uh, stopping distance is much improved, general safety improved. Look at the temperature ranges if you're thinking about winter tyres. And there are countries in Europe, if you're thinking about travelling over winter through Europe, going up to the, um, uh, going through Netherlands, going up into, uh, you know, Scandinavia or anywhere like that, they require you to have winter tyres. Some require you to have chains as well. So just check out your tyres, check out what you're taking with you if you are going touring around Europe. I'm sure you would anyway. Um, but even in this country, winter tyres make a big difference. Uh, they make the van feel really secure, and if you do get that kind of flash of snow that we get here sometimes, you'll be super confident in still going out in that kind of weather, rather than our really nice summer tyres, which are a bit quieter, a bit more economical, but actually not great for winter. They're a bit of a compromise. So definitely worth thinking about either a second set of wheels or swapping your tyres over to get winter tyres on your van. And finally, a uh, quick tip on things like washer fluid. Now, I know it sounds really kind of like, yeah, yeah, washer fluid. Everyone knows that you need to put winter washer fluid in. It's really important, obviously, for visibility generally. And the general kind of supermarket stuff you've got to be a bit careful with because it doesn't actually go down that cold. Um, look at the stuff. We, we tend to buy ours from Halfords because it says on the... Um, on the um, containers exactly what temperature it goes down to and what dilution to get what temperature and things um, so just have a look for that but it's really important if you've got headlight washers and the reason for that is because if you have washer fluid which freezes inside headlight washers but the bit further up the pump is okay because it's nearer the engine if you use your headlights and you wash your windscreen you will occasionally find that you will have a headlight washer pop out so it will pop out of the van disappear into a hedge and then it will cost you a lot of money to repair because a you've got to buy a new headlight washer mechanism so the actual um, spraying part and you've usually got to get a color coordinated little cap which sits on the end of it i've had to buy them for a mini i've had to buy them for a bmw i've repaired some on a volvo um, it's definitely worth just using the right washer fluid and it only happens because they freeze so if you've got the right washer fluid, that won't happen. Definitely worth thinking about because nobody wants to be end up buying fitting uh, really fiddly and annoying headlight washers uh, on a van. So we hope this video has been helpful for you. There's loads of different little tricks and tips in there. Good luck with the competition. Uh, it's great to see you all. Hopefully you are going to get out camping in this winter time. Even though it's a bit dark, uh, we're going to try and get out there and do as much as we can and still enjoy our van 12 months of the year. And I hope you're going to do the same too. We'll see you again soon for some more California time.